Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we've got Mika in and this is not a review, but Peter's gonna run you through what you should be thinking about before you pick up the camera or even what you should be thinking about when you're selecting a lens or buying a lens and he's gonna show you that. So yeah, I'm gonna do a, a sort of series about what I think about before I pick up a camera and this is just one of the things. So say I've decided I'm gonna pick up a camera and I'm gonna use a 50 mil lens or a close to a 50 mil lens size. Because I've been doing this way too long and have too much gear, um, I pretty much laid the lenses out in um, value. So this is like a, I'm talking Australian dollars, so whatever. I'm talking about maybe, I think, an $8,000 lens, then uh, two, one and a half, two, about a one um, second hand only lens, which I think I picked up for about $400. And this little um, artisan lens, which was about 275. And so we'll leave a link to where you can purchase that one in the description. Yeah, we'll leave a link to where the where you can find these. So it's pretty much uh, an o Zeiss Otis, uh, Zeiss Distagon, um, uh, Loxia. Then this is a Hasselblad 80 mil with an adapter, and then the Artisan. 50 mil APS-C, but it's a 0.95. This is not like a review, and this is not like we're looking at the technicals. This is like what I'm looking at, and it's the emotion of the lens. All of the lenses I'm using are manual focus, so which means I'm not gonna be razor perfect on every single picture, even with um, focus peaking, but that's because it's not that big a deal for me. What deal for me is, is the look I get out of a lens. We've just set it up with natural light and we've got a whole heap of chrome there which is going to show bokehs. So I should start most likely with the most expensive, the Otis. So this is the Otis 55. I'll be shooting it fully wide open at 1.4. Uh, we are tethered up on the Sony image edge. Um, it seems to be working really well. I'm not having issues with it and it is free for Sony users, which is really good. So I'm gonna try and have Mika in exactly the same picture for, place for all the pictures, so we can do a comparison. Uh, like I said, these are all manual focus lenses. The sun might move around a little bit, so I'm fully wide open. So what I'm doing now is just being really careful to nail the actual shot, uh, the focus on the shot, and this is pretty much the, the shot out of the Otis. Um, I'll, the sharpening, like I said, it's not a big thing for me because I don't like over sharp things. I rather something slightly soft and I defocus quite often when I'm shooting. I'm more looking at the feel I'm getting in the background. Uh, there we go. So I'm going to shoot one in colour and one in black and white. Cool. And that way I can look at the bokehs both in the bokeh in colour and the bokeh in black and white, just to do a comparison. So th that's what I've got off the Otis. Right, so now I've got the little size Distagon on. I'm at 1.5. I'll just look through. So all I'm doing is slightly adjusting each exposure. So I'm just getting the zebrine going off on the tip of her nose. Oops, two shots. There's the colour picture. Cool, there's the black and white. Um, the first difference in just the using of the two is that the focusing of this, it's a very big range. So a big movement focuses a little bit so I can be more accurate with my focusing with this lens. Um, this has got a very short throw on the focus, which means it makes it a little bit tougher to be super accurate. I'm gonna do the comparison at the end, but I'm just gonna talk about the feel as I'm shooting. So let's jump on to, this is a little Loxia, and I love these little lenses. They're nice, compact, they're light. You can de-click them for videoing. This is an F2 lens. Again, this lens has a very, very short throw on the focus ring. It's handy for me in the way that if I'm chasing a model, like outside or something, 
Um, a short movement to move a lot of the focus makes it really, really handy for me. Uh, I don't have to go wind, wind, wind. All right, so, all right, so now that I'm on that, the Hasselblad, this is an 80 mm The reason I'm doing this is I just want to show you a really old lens so you can see the difference of an old film lens to the modern digital lenses. So the very first thing, this is a 2.8, so I'm gonna have to definitely come down from 3 20th of a second. So I'm down to a 60th, which I'm fine, I'm on a tripod and Mika stays pretty still. Yeah, an 80th is better. Cool. Cool, and let's go black and white. Now I'll come down to my final lens, and as you see straight away, oh, this is an APS-C lens, so that's giving me a horrible vignette crop. So I've put this into APS-C mode. Um, this is a 0.95 lens, so they've done this based on the famous Leica 0.95. I think some of the famous, I think the Canon's got their 0.95 lens. I'll get you to creep up a little bit. Right about there, perfect. Maybe fraction back. So the APS-C lens has now made this a different focal length again, and we're gonna see it in the backgrounds more than anything. So it's fully wide open and cool. Cool. So I'm now back in the office and I'm gonna run through the photos so I, I can now give you my thoughts about each of the lenses. The first one is gonna start off in order. So this was the Otis and you'll see my camera settings are sitting up there. The only thing is some of the lenses because I don't talk to the camera won't put anything else, but this was at 1.4. And with this, like I said before, I find the Otis even fully wide open. I, I could have put something right up in the corner and focused on that with this lens and it would still be razor sharp sitting right up here. Here's a little link to a picture I took many years ago. This lens is more what I would say if I need to have something technically correct. So, you know, perfect razor, razor sharp from edge to edge, uh, very little vignetting, a really nice contrast. Yes, it is a very expensive lens. Yes, it is a very heavy lens. Uh, the manual focusing though, it is the best of all the lenses we tested because it has such a large throw. It means I can be super, super accurate. And I love this lens, the bokeh I like. And yeah, even though the camera club people are gonna go, there's a lemon bokeh over there. I don't care about the lemon bokehs, it doesn't worry me. So this is the color and this is the black and white. I shoot black and white most of my time. So I'm really, really more interested in how the picture renders in the black and white for my own taste. The next lens was, this was the 50 mil Zeiss Sona f1.5. Again, this lens is, I wouldn't call this a technical lens, it's quite an old lens which still gets made today. It's a lens that I love. I really do like the bokering on this lens. I like that it's not as contrasty. I like that it has a little bit of vignetting on the edge and it definitely loses focus on the edge. It's a very light little lens, it's not too expensive. The focus throw is very short. I've learned to live with that shortness and yeah, it is a lens that I use a lot. I actually really enjoy this lens. And again, there's the color to the black and white. The next lens is the Aloxia. Now these lenses are to die for, for the how small they are and the price of them. They're sort of, if I couldn't afford an Otis, this would be the next lens I'd buy as a technical lens. I get good contrast, it is razor sharp, it is really, really small, and I really, really enjoy that as a run and gun lens, being so small and sharp. So if I'm traveling and can't take my Otis, I'd normally put one of these in to at least give me something with that sort of contrasty look that the Otis has. And there's the black and white and color variation to it. The next lens, this is a Hasselblad. And yes, it's, you'll look how decontrasted it is compared to that. The contrast is way pulled out, which I quite like because it allows me to add contrast into it. Sometimes I don't want a super contrasty picture. The only thing I find that I don't love on the Hasselblad, I'm finding the bokeh, see how sharp the edges of the bokeh 
can be that distracts me i know everyone loves this and talks about bokeh and things like this i don't love the razor sharpness of the bokeh but i still like the distortions of the lens and you'll see there's definitely a sort of a, a different coloring coming off this glass because it's quite old glass and again there's the black and white and color versions of it then finally this was a massive surprise this was the first time i actually even used this lens and this is the little seven artisan i think that's how it's pronounced 50 mil uh, it is an aps-c lens so you have to set your camera to aps-c and it's a 0.95 when it comes to depth of field so it's tiny when you're shooting wide open you've really really got to be on your game with looking at your focus peaking i don't know if i'd want to be trying to focus this on a dslr system with a small viewfinder i think i'd really really struggle to get this sharp at 0.95 but on the sony system I didn't really have a problem, or I didn't have much of a problem at all trying to get sharpness, even though the focus ring is still a very, very small throw. This lens really, really surprised me. Um, in fact, it surprised me a lot. I'm just going to run through just so you can see a better comparison between them by, I've just put them in order of the lenses and put all the colors together and all the black and whites together. So that's the Otis, the Sonar, the little Loxia, the Hasselblad, and then that's the Artisan. And you'll just see that every single lens has a different feel to it. And this is more where I go when you're talking about lens, lens selection, or even buying a lens. And if we just go through the black and whites again, you'll still see there's a distinct difference from every single lens. This is why I hate lens reviews and hate pages that do reviews on gear they're just talking about the technicals when i put a lens on my camera i'm talking about the emotion i get off the lens to create the image i'm trying to create and that really is the way that you should start to look at your gear when you're going to buy it maybe go and hire some lenses before you buy them and just find a lens that you love the look of the glass and the emotion the actual glass gets you not how sharp it is or how little vignette it goes on the rest find a lens that's actually going to help you tell your stories i hope you see where i'm looking at when it comes to the lens it's not how much a lens costs or how perfect the glass is or how what the bokeh is it's what lens suits the type of look i'm trying to create and yes i have a lot of 50 round 50 mil lenses and there is a couple like especially like this one i use a lot because it does suit a narrative of a certain type of look that i want and i do use the otis a lot because if i need to get beautiful perfection so i need to get you know very little vignette towards the ends as edges you know all the all the things that i'm looking for to be like a technically perfect camera so if it's not so much about emotion but more about having something perfect and by doing that it means I, if i'm going out to do a shoot i know what lens to put in based on what i'm trying to create in that shoot so i don't have to carry all of these different lenses the final thing is is uh, this was a lens that was given to me to have a play of and i thought yeah the lens around about you know two three four hundred dollars especially at a point um, 0.95 this is going to really fall short and i'm so surprised it didn't fall short i found a little bit harder to focus but that's because i'm shooting at 0.95 which means our depth of field is like a millimeter when i zoomed into the images i realized i was razor sharp it's just that when i looked back on the pictures it looks like the eyebrows were soft well of course they're going to be soft at 0.95 if i'm going to have the eyelashes sharp so yeah very surprised how that is and i'm certainly going to use this a little bit more so after we filmed this i was so impressed with that little lens uh, mika had some time and i had some time so we decided just to quickly do a bit of a play shoot while we're waiting for her mum to come pick her up we shot quite a few images and i've just picked out a few of my favorite from the shoot now these all the shots i've been showing you these are just the previews off the roars in photo mechanic i can zoom in with all these i can zoom in 100 percent and have a look at them these are not retouched they have not gone through raw processing or anything so yes they will all be 
lacking anything that you're going to add to a picture. So don't say, oh, the con they're very low contrast because they've had nothing done to them yet. These are some of my favorite shots I just quickly picked out from the shoot. And I just, I don't know, that little lens is just the exact type of look I like for when I'm trying to shoot some of the stuff to replicate what was happening in the 90s in fashion like Kate Moss and so forth. And I just couldn't believe how nice this lens, you'll see I've got nice and sharp, but look at this beautiful fall off. So models can have skin that's a little bit off and most of the cleanup work's already done for me basically by the lens. I'm not looking at anything that might be an imperfection of this lens. I'm looking at what I'm loving about the look that I'm getting out of this lens. Like, that to me is, this printed big is gonna look gorgeous just because I get this beautiful fall off so quickly. So I can tell you that this lens has made its way into my everyday bag. I absolutely adore this lens fully wide open. That's how I would use it. I have other lenses that I would use differently, but this lens has a look that I feel the other lenses in my kit do not have and allows me to tell a story and show the emotion that I want to show when I'm taking a shot. It allows me to take you into the point I want you to focus in on and really, really soften it off everywhere else. If you enjoyed this, we've got another couple of videos up there to look at one on LED lighting.